Uh, we've heard a lot uh, since uh, since October 7th about the tunnels uh, beneath Gaza, and uh, there are many of them. There's about 500 kilometers of tunnels in Gaza. Um, what's interesting is that, that they are a network of tunnels, that that is, it's not one tunnel system all connected. Uh, there is, uh, from everything I've seen and understand, there's really no tunnel that really connects the, the, the south and the north. Um, and and so, the, so the tunnel systems are uh, integrated into particular neighborhoods, into particular geographic locations. Uh, the tunnels, uh, even though the Israeli military has uh, shut the entrances or, or, and, and blown up uh, both from the air and looking, uh, using liquid explosives, uh, blown up many of the tunnels. There's still a lot of tunnels. The uh, terrorists are still popping out of various tunnels and, and managing to kill Israeli soldiers, uh, who kill and wound Israeli soldiers um, all over the Gaza Strip or everywhere that Israel is operating right now uh, in the Gaza Strip. Uh, the, 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 the fighting is fierce. Uh, there were many casualties yesterday, quite a few casualties, Israeli casualties, um, uh, yesterday as the fighting is fierce both in the remaining few neighborhoods in uh, northern Gaza that Israel is still trying to con get complete control of, uh, and in Khan Yunus in the south, both places filled with tunnels, terrorists popping up in various places, Israel trying to destroy the tunnels where they can. Uh, one mechanism to destroy at least some of the tunnels, the tunnels particularly in the western part of the Gaza Strip, close to the uh, Mediterranean Sea. Um, it was reported, uh, I think, yesterday or the day before in the Wall Street Journal. Um, according to some sources, Israel is starting to pump salt water into these tunnels and, and to, to see what happens. Now, some of the tunnel systems are more inland and not connected necessarily to the tunnels that are uh, they're approaching, they're trying to flood. But the idea is to flood these tunnels. Uh, and, and force uh, the force whoever's in there out, uh, force whoever's in there uh, out, it, it would, the flooding would also destroy any food, potentially destroy, given that it's salt water, destroy um, uh, ammunition, uh, weapons, uh, and everything else. Uh, so destroy the capacity of the terrorists to use the tunnels and to move within the tunnels. Uh, this is an experiment. I think the Israelis are trying to see uh, what they can do here, uh, the challenge of literally destroying every single one of these tunnels is a massive challenge, and uh, flooding in the seawater might be uh, a shortcut uh, that, that could get rid of, of the threat that they pose uh, and, and uh, before they are all kind of blown up and, and destroyed and turned into, into, into uh, dust, which is what they all uh, should be. So there is flooding. Uh, the other news that came out uh, uh, yesterday is that uh, Israel, for the first time, has acknowledged that it has troops deep inside the tunnel networks. So in some of the tunnel networks, I assume not the ones that are being flooded, Israel is actually operating special forces teams inside the tunnel network. I assume that some of those forces are there in order to try to find hostages and, uh, and also to try to uh, kill uh, the Hamas leadership, uh, find them and kill them. Uh, it, it, not a lot of information, obviously, for, for security grounds, uh, was, uh, was revealed in terms of which tunnel systems, which Israeli units are functioning there. But it, 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 I don't know that there's any kind of warfare that is more, for soldiers, they're more horrific than, than the tunnels, the dark, uh, they're booby-trapped. Booby traps are everywhere. Uh, you don't know what you're going to find around a corner. They're very difficult to use electronic uh, means uh, and, uh, and uh, uh, more advanced uh, means to know what's in front of you and what's the side of you. Uh, but Israeli troops are operating inside this tunnel systems networks um, in an attempt to find... to find... Um, uh, to find uh, Hostages and uh, Hamas leadership uh, would be my uh, my bet. Uh, also, yesterday, uh, Israeli troops did find two bodies or did extract two bodies of two hostages that have been killed by Hamas. 
I mean, what's sad about this is, is in extracting those two bodies, two Israeli soldiers died in the operation to extract the bodies um, because of, you know, the, the, the bodies were, were kept by Hamas units. And uh, so the risk that Israel is going to in order to extract these bodies and extract these troops and the, the danger it places its own troops as a consequence is, is, uh, is truly horrific. Um, but that is, uh, that is what war is like. One other aspect of this that I think is, is just worth pointing out, it, it's an interesting statistic, but I did see a, um, a, a statistic that, uh, that claimed that over 20%, over 20% of the troops that have been killed in, uh, the Israeli troops that have been killed uh, in this Gaza operation have been killed uh, from friendly fire. Uh, doesn't surprise me. Uh, it is, uh, it is, uh, uh, that was true in the first Gulf War um, uh, in the American side, I think well over 20%, I think almost 50% of the troops killed, American troops killed, were not killed by enemy fire, but by friendly fire. Uh, wars, a, un, uh, combat is unbelievably messy. It's unbelievably uncertain. Um, it, it's very difficult to distinguish friend from foe. It's very difficult in the fog of war, literally, the, 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 the fog, the, 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 the low visibility of war, uh, to tell sometimes who you're firing at. And uh, one of the great tragedies of war is that many of the people who die, die of friendly fire. And in this case, um, over 20% of Israelis' casualties were a consequence of friendly fire.